At 5.3 liters, this is one of the smallest 4060 builds I've seen yet. It still maintains an internal power supply unit, has room for a good, low-profile CPU cooler, weighs just over 7 pounds, and can play any game in your Steam library, 1080p high, and most at 1440p. So let's take a look at the parts I chose for this build and see just how easy it is to put together. Now, later on, we'll talk about this video sponsor Squarespace, but for now, let's get started. For the CPU, I'm going with the Ryzen 5 7600. Now, I think that this is a great entry point into the 7000 series of AMD CPUs. It's pretty affordable, and it's a great choice if your main use is gaming. Now, while you can do video rendering and things like that on the CPU, if that's something you plan to do a lot, then I would recommend stepping up to the 7700. And if you prefer the Intel route, then you could also check out the 13400. Now, another reason I decided to go with the CPU is that it's a 65 watt TDP. So this should hopefully work well with our low profile CPU cooler. Now it does require an AM5 motherboard. Unfortunately, most ITX AM5 motherboards are still pretty pricey, but I do figure if you're gonna be building a new PC, why not build on the new platform? For the motherboard, I'm going with the ASUS B650EI. Now I've used this motherboard in a few builds now, and it's probably my favorite AM5 ITX board at the moment. I really just like the all black understated look. It has large and quiet VRM heat sinks, two M.2 slots, the one in the front being PCI Express 5.0, and just a great selection of USB ports, including two USB-C, built-in Wi-Fi 6E, and a BIOS flashback button. I just feel like this motherboard has the right amount of everything. So now let's gently lower the CPU down, aligning the arrow on the CPU with the one on the socket. I like to give it a little shake to make sure that it's completely seated, and then we can lower the latch. For an SSD, I'm gonna keep it simple with a single one terabyte stick from Samsung. If you wanna use that second slot on the back, you'll want to install that now as you really won't have access to it once everything's installed into the case. For RAM, I'm going with Corsair Vengeance DDR5 6000 memory. Now DDR5 6000 is the best balance of cost, performance, and stability on the 7000 series CPUs. We also need lower clearance sticks in order for the CPU cooler to fit. These are AMD optimized as well, so it should work well as far as timings go, and it also has an Expo memory profile for overclocking. So let's align the notch and then apply a bit of pressure until you hear the latches click into place. For the CPU cooler, we are going to go with the Noctua NH-L12S. Now this is a low profile 120 millimeter CPU cooler. It's super compact and it's also got a 70 millimeter clearance, which will fit just perfectly into this case, which can allow up to 72 millimeters in clearance. Because aesthetically in this build, I'm going for an all black look. I'm going to replace the default brown fan with a slim Chromax 120 millimeter fan. If you haven't already, you can remove the default retention brackets from the motherboard, place the plastic spacers over the screw threads, and then install the two mounting bars. Then apply a bit of thermal paste and lower the cooler, aligning it with the threads on the mounting bars. Then we can fasten the heatsink, switching off every two to three rotations until it's fully tightened so that there's an even pressure across the CPU. Now, the case I'm using today is from a company called Laser 3D. These guys make some really well thought out custom small form factor cases with a ton of different customization options. The specific model I'm using today is called the HT5. It's 5.3 liters. It's designed with low profile GPUs in mind and to accommodate the exact power supply unit we'll be using today. Now it does not come assembled. You kind of have to do that while you're building it, but it is incredibly simple to put together. And they nicely organize all the parts so that it makes that build process just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna grab the rear panel that includes the cutouts for our dual slot GPU and attach the four metal rectangle corners along the edge. From there, we can attach the rear panel to this larger base panel. Let's get our motherboard and align it to the four standoffs, and then we can secure that to the base panel. Now we can take the front panel and secure it to the base panel with just two screws. Before we continue, I wanna take a moment to thank this video sponsor, Squarespace. Building a new website can take a lot of time and effort, but with Squarespace's flexible templates, creating a new website is very simple. You can select from hundreds of available templates and customize it as much as you need to fit your style. Squarespace also allows you to add an online store. This gives you the ability to track orders and website traffic in the analytics section. You can also create email campaigns, such as newsletters, to send out to all your subscribers. Even if you're simply looking to create an online portfolio, Squarespace is the ideal platform to do it. Whenever you're ready to build your new site, head over to squarespace.com slash Devin Johnson to start your free trial today. Squarespace is also offering my subscribers 10% off their first purchase of a website or domain, so just use the code Devin Johnson at checkout to save. Okay, now it's time to grab the GPU, and the card that's gonna make all of this possible is the new Gigabyte Low Profile 4060. So a huge thanks to Gigabyte for sending this over for the build. Now, I know a lot of people weren't hot on the 4060 when it initially released, but 
I think this is where we can really see the benefits from the efficiency gains that come with this generation of GPUs. This is a huge step up in gaming performance for a GPU in this form factor, compared to the last popular low profile card, the A2000, which is a much more expensive professional card and does not come near the gaming performance of this card. There's also a newer RTX 4000 professional card, but that thing costs $1,500 and this 4060 is $320. So I don't really think they're all that comparable. This isn't a cut down version of the 4060 either. It still requires the same 115 watts, so you will need an 8-pin power connector. It's also running at the same base clock. Now this graphic card is a little bit longer than other low profile cards at 182 millimeters. So it is kind of difficult to find these much smaller cases that will accommodate that 182 millimeter length. But either way, this is the most powerful low profile consumer GPU that you can get today. And I think it's gonna be a game changer for small and powerful PCs. And it's at this point, I think I'll start attaching the cables. So that's the motherboard at the bottom, the CPU at the top right, and the eight pin PCI Express cable into the GPU. Now that the GPU is slotted into the motherboard, we can attach the side panel. And the side panel used on the GPU side is also where the power button is supposed to go. Because this case was designed before this low profile 4060 was created, the position of the power button doesn't accommodate for the length of this GPU. The power button that comes with the case is actually kind of big, but luckily I do have a smaller power button. However, the cutout in the side panel is still too large for my smaller button. Laser 3D actually includes these little adapter pieces made for different rear panel power inputs that I won't need to use. And one of them actually has a cutout that fits my smaller button perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is use double-sided tape and tape that adapter over the existing power button cutout so that my smaller button can be installed in its place. It will be slightly recessed, but this is just as easy to access as the other button would be. And the power supply unit I'm gonna be using is from a company called HT Plex. They sent over a incredibly small 250 watt gallium nitrate power supply. So a huge thanks to them for sending it over. This thing is pretty wild. It's very slim and it's fully passive with a full aluminum body to dissipate heat. So with that comes zero noise. You can also sync two of these together if you needed 500 watts, which I think is pretty neat. But they also sell one that looks basically the same. It's only slightly larger than this one and it has 500 watts. So let's grab that power supply unit and the other side panel. Now this case was designed with the HD Plex power supplies in mind and has some mounting points on the panel itself to secure it. With it installed onto the plate, I'm gonna plug in the three power supply cables and install the panel with the power supply attached. Included in the HD Plex box is a C14 power connector. That can be fastened to the rear panel with two bolts and then plug that right into the power supply. Last thing to do here is place the top cover and attach that last panel. And that's the build complete. So I think that this was a very satisfying build. Now it was pretty difficult to find a case that took full advantage of that small low profile 4060 because most of the cases with low profile GPUs in mind are targeting shorter cards like the A2000 and then of course you have the standard small form factor cases where a low profile GPU just isn't really needed because those are designed with standard size cards in mind. The laser 3D case here fit the bill perfectly of what I was looking for. It fits the 4060, the exact power supply from HD Plex I wanted to use, and it gives just enough room for a decent CPU cooler. As far as the 4060 goes, we've already seen what the performance of a 4060 looks like. And that's kind of the nice thing about this 4060 is that it's not a cut down version of it. It's significantly smaller, but it still runs pretty cool. That little triple fan setup seems to be working really well, and it's also not very loud. Under a full gaming load, I'm seeing around 41 to 42 decibels using a standard fan profile. And then bumping the fan up to full speed, I'm still only seeing around 42 decibels for the full system. Because of the small size, it's also pretty easy to fit this into a backpack. I've also been using it with this new Genki Shadowcast 2, which allows you to use your iPad as a display. Now there is a bit of latency here. I'm finding it to be around 33 milliseconds, but that's about the same as an average TV. And in my opinion, it's not really too noticeable when you're playing racing games or something like Ratchet and Clank. Now, I don't think that this is suitable for heavy esports games or anything like that, but it's still pretty convenient if you're playing through a story-based game and you don't wanna also buy or carry around a portable monitor. So I'm actually pretty happy that Gigabyte stepped up and made this low profile card. I'm hoping that we'll see more small case manufacturers come out with revisions on existing or even new cases with this exact card in mind. Because you know, smaller case brands aren't gonna make cases for products that don't exist. So it takes a company like Gigabyte to put out a card like this so that case makers will invest their time and money to create new cases that will take advantage of the card. But I wanna know your thoughts on it. Do you like these smaller five liter builds? Is this something that you could see yourself building? Or would you even wanna see more videos like this on the channel? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.